we're all accountable for creating our own life. We're all accountable for our results. That's first number one, take accountability for that and say, hey, I am responsible for my current income. I am responsible for my current life. Nobody else is and nothing else is, just me. If you want to do better, you've got to get uncomfortable. Well, people don't like that. But let me say this. Comfort is the kiss of death to success. The kiss of death. What up, masters? Welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery. My friends, we have a phenomenal episode for you. This is a treat. I'll be honest with you. It took a long time to put this interview together and it, it was worth it. Harv Ecker, my friends, he wrote the book Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. He is here with us live on Path to Mastery and, well, I shouldn't say that. Everybody's live on Path to Mastery. But anyway, he has a new book that just came out called The Good Millionaire and it's all about helping to overcome your limiting beliefs. I know exactly what your limiting belief just said. That little voice in your head said, I don't have any limiting beliefs. Well, the voice that just said that, that's actually your limiting belief. Anyway, it's all good. I have them. We all have them. Bottom line is Harv is here with us. She has some phenomenal strategies on overcoming those reliefs, bringing service to the world. And just she has a lot of insights as well from his first book and why people aren't taking advantage or why people aren't becoming millionaires. I mean, a lot of people want to. They write it down. They do their goals every year. And then it just doesn't come together, you know, and he talks to us about that. So super pumped on this one. Listen, check out our sponsors, Vulcan 7. You need some data. It doesn't matter if you're calling Fizzbowls expired. You can use their system. You can call neighborhoods. You could call everybody in your database, load them in and use the dial or however you want to use it. They've got a tool and the data is phenomenal okay if you do want to do fitzbos and expires check them out they got a promo for my listeners you can try the system out for two weeks for just 49 dollars that's right try it out two weeks 49 dollars if you love it keep going with it if you don't then stop and you have their data from the last two weeks i mean how do you go wrong you can't go to vulcan7.com forward slash path to mastery to get your two-week trial, vulcan7.com forward slash path to mastery. All right. The other thing I want to share with you is I am pumped about a special course I'm putting together. It's actually a webinar series, okay? It's going to be five weeks. The first webinar is going to be October 3rd, 2019, 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern time, and it's about sales call reluctance, okay? I want you to hear that not call reluctance. I know a lot of people say call reluctance. This is sales call reluctance. The difference, I know your, your little voice is saying, well, what's the difference? The difference is sales call reluctance is about all forms of connection, not just picking up the phone. So we're going to talk to you about using the phone, using text, using email, making those in-person live contacts, talking to people at Starbucks if you choose. It makes no difference. Calling all the people you know, the people that you know who I'm talking about, the ones you haven't called for years that you know you should be calling, okay? October 3rd, my friends, we're going to be doing a webinar on sales call reluctance. Make sure you get signed up for that. Super easy. Just go to the reluctant salesperson.net. The reluctant salesperson.net. Again, October 3rd, sales call reluctant. Sign up, join us on the webinar. It's going to be amazing. Then we're going to put together a five week training for people who really want to dig deep. All right, enough out of me. Man, I've been carrying on. Harv Ecker is going to share the secrets of the millionaire mind and the good millionaire. Enjoy. Hey, Masters, welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery. And this week, we have a special, special guest for you. We have Harv Ecker, who wrote the amazing... I don't know, you guys must know this book. It's a book I read years ago. And it actually, you know, it just it's an honor to have you on the show, Harv, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, I mean, you wrote the book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Yeah, I thinking of when I read that book, I my mom recommended that to me. It's got to be 20 years ago now. Uh, a little bit less than that. Come All on. All right. My, <laughs> all right. My bad. Well, well how, long, how, how long ago was that? 2005. So you probably read on the first day out. Yeah. Got it. Okay, good. So a little less than that. Sorry about that. But anyway, phenomenal book. And interestingly enough, it came up again recently 
in our team, we did a book club and, and your book was chose as the book to do the book club on. So that was awesome. So again, thanks for doing this. A little bit about you for people who don't know who you are. I mean, you, you know, after 14 years of struggle, you cracked the code and used the principles that you teach to go from zero to a millionaire in just two and a half years. You've since become a multimillionaire. And I'm obviously reading your bio. Talk to us, Harv, you know, fill in some of those gaps on your bio. Who are you? I guess the most important thing is that I left college after first year, did not graduate because I was in a hurry to get rich. That did not work out anywhere close to what I was hoping. I was broke and literally destitute for the next decade. I literally had to choose most nights between putting $5 of gas in my car or having dinner that night. And mostly it was the gas. I couldn't believe this was happening to me like a lot of other people who go through struggles. I was going through a big time. All I wanted to do was be successful and get rich, and I wasn't even close. Finally, uh, I ended up living back home with my parents. I met up with a very wealthy friend of my father who saw me in the hallway and said, uh, your father says that you're broke and you're a bum. Uh, so I said, thanks for that. And yeah. he said, well, you know, is that if you're not doing as well as you'd like to be doing, all that means is there's something you still don't know. Mm. So being a brash young man at the time, I thought I knew what, you know, pretty well everything. And I guess I was open because I was broke again. And he said, what do you want to do? And I said, I just want, I just want to get rich. I mean, I just want to be successful financially. I don't know exactly, but that's all I want. He says, well, how do you want to do it? I said, in business. I just want to be in. So, you know, he says, Listen, if you want to be rich in business, then you should study, you know, rich business people because rich people do the same thing as most other rich people and broke people do and think the same things as most other broke people. And since I wasn't doing much at the time, I spent the next six months literally studying rich business people. And I uh, ended up with seven very specific principles that they all seem to have in common. I put them to the test. Uh, I started with a $2,000 credit card loan and opened the world's first chain of retail fitness stores. And two and a half years later, I was a millionaire. I, I learned uh, basically that what I was doing now was completely different than what I was doing before. And don't forget, I was going through all the seminars and books and tapes and everything. And none of that, none of that was working for me. Mm. So uh, people started asking me like, Oh my God, like what happened to you? You're the same guy that still owes me 20 bucks. I, oh my God, here, I'm sorry, here's 50. I'm, I pause. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, now, you know, you've got this and this and this and this beautiful home and cars. And I said, well, listen, this is what I used to think and do when I was broke. This is what I think and do in my strategies to get rich. And here's both of them and do whatever you want. People started recognizing and doing that and started working for them. They started asking me to help their friends and teach and coach and stuff. So I started doing that. And now I have close to uh, three and a half million students around the world. My book, Secrets of Millionaire Mind, has um, sold over four million copies. It's in 46 languages. Mm. People relate to it because, number one, it works. But number two, I was broke. And I know what it's like to be struggling. And I was embarrassed. I was frustrated. And I didn't know where to turn. And so... That's why I help people now. You know, you were kind of reading it and say, I, I vowed at one point in time that if I ever, ever make it, I promise I'll help other people in the same crappy position that I was in. And so that's exactly what I do now. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you sharing that when you shared, you know, you went from just being able to maybe put some gas in your car or have dinner, right? I mean, so how does somebody go from that point to saying, okay, now, you know what, like, what would you say to our listeners would be like the step? Let's say you're in that place right now where you are struggling. I mean, our listeners are real estate agents, as you know, the market's tough right now. There are some people that may be in that place where they're putting in a lot of hours, maybe they're not getting the results. What would you say to those people, Harv? Well, same as me. You see, remember, as I said, I was doing all the seminars, books, tapes, everything. I was you know, learning a very specific certain stuff that everybody else was learning and everyone else was doing. I would say this is that whatever you're doing right now is getting you the result you're getting right now. You've got to be. And as you know, I'm not the first to say to you that we're all accountable for creating our own life. We're all accountable for our results. That's first. Number one, take accountability for that and say, hey, 
I am responsible for my current income. I am responsible for my current life. Nobody else is and nothing else is, just me, my thoughts and my actions. And guys, that's all that happens, right? It's your thoughts and your actions that determine it, period. And then the second thing is that once you've taken that accountability, say, hey, okay, if that's the case, then You know, what I've done up until now and what I'm doing right now is getting me the result I'm getting. So I'm creating this result by what I'm doing right now. So that means if I want a different and better result, I've got to do something different and better than I'm doing now. And I cannot be doing what I'm doing now and expect a different result. And so literally you can't do more of the same. You've got to change it up. So let me let me ask you a question, and I, I want to get to your new book in a minute too. But what you said is we, we're accountable. We all have to be accountable, right? Too. But there's a lot of people that don't want to be accountable, or I'm not saying they don't want to be. They just may not even realize they need to be. How does somebody go to that place? Like, how do you, in your mind, how does somebody become accountable? Say, so you know what? I will take full accountability for where I am right now, because most people don't want to do that, Harv. No, they don't, because then they have to suck it up and say, I'm the problem. That was my issue, David. I mean, when I was broke for 10 years, I always thought the way to success was I would do what other people are doing to get rich. So if somebody was in this XYZ business and it was hot and going well for them, I would do that business and then I would get rich too. And I did that for 10 businesses and it didn't work for me. And I didn't understand why it wasn't working for me. And I forgot about the last part of it that was me. I was the problem. So the first thing is to recognize that you are the root of your success. It's not just about accountability, it's about everything, meaning that you create your success and you create your non-success. And that's a belief system that we must accept and embrace in order to hold on to the steering wheel of our life. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not at the steering wheel of your life, then who is? And meaning that if you're not in control, then who is? Means means you cannot improve your life if you don't take that steering wheel. So the number one thing you must do is say, hey, I'm taking over the steering wheel of my life and I'm going to control it the best I can by being responsible for every single thing I think and every single thing I do and my actions. And that hopefully will translate into a different life. Is there a shift like somewhere in mindset or is there a strategy for someone to do that? Or Absolutely. I mean, the most important thing is to a, understand that what you're doing right now isn't working and that if you're not in control of your life and if you're not taking accountability, then you are doing the opposite, which means you are playing. And I'm going to say it straight because you sound like a straight shooter. Okay. And you're near New York. Yeah. So I get it. Listen, everybody, if you're not willing to take accountability and say, I create my life, then you are playing the role of the victim. Mm. The victim, you are the victim. You're playing the role of the victim. You embrace that because you believe that is an easier way to be in the world. And it is, my friends, it is, but you will be broke for the rest of your freaking life. Yeah, and I I think it's even deeper than that. But yeah, I, I get it. So what if somebody doesn't know they're a victim? Well, I mean, it doesn't matter whether you, you know, first thing is, of course, is awareness to recognize that that you're playing the role of the victim. And how do you know that? Number one is, You complain a lot. Number two is you blame a lot. So if you find yourself blaming and complaining, you're a victim. It's as simple as that. And so you've got to suck it up and you've got to, what we use is declarations. You say to yourself over and over again, I create my life. I create the exact amount of my success or not success. That's all up to me. And you say that enough times. It's not about an affirmation. It's about declaring that into the world and then living into it. Hmm. it's not that hard. That's not a hard one for people to finally understand that, you know, everything around them and everyone around them is victim world and all victims are broke because you cannot be rich and be a victim, right? They don't go together. It just doesn't even sound good. Hey, I'm a really rich victim. Nah, that doesn't even work. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. You got to be broke or close to it. When I mean broke, I don't mean no money. I mean, you're not coming close to your potential. And that's what most people are because they live in the world of comfort zone. Comfortable means what you're doing right now. If you want to do better, you've got to get uncomfortable. Well, people don't like that. But let me say this. Comfort is the kiss of death to success, the kiss of death. So here's an easy out for everybody. Listen closely. So I don't really want to be uncomfortable. Okay, but listen, you've got to be a little uncomfortable for a short time because when you do something different, you're going to be a little uncomfortable, right? So fine. But what happens when you keep doing that? You get what? You get comfortable. 
And then what happens? Then you do something else that's uncomfortable. Then what happens? You get comfortable with that. Mm. So it's like going into water. At first, it's a little cold and uncomfortable. But after a couple of minutes, hey, come in the water. It's beautiful, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it's not so hard. You got to change what you're doing now to get something different, period. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the rubber band analogy people use, right? You stretch it and it's it's a little stretch next time. So I do want to shift gears, though. I want to get into your, your new book. I know... Secrets of the Million of Mine is one of the best-selling financial books of all time. So outstanding book. Again, multiple times read it. Your new book is called The Good Millionaire. What do you mean by good millionaire? Well, you know, here's the issue. When people hear the name, they often think it means like, oh, when I get rich, I'm going to do good with my money. All right. And that's fine. That's wonderful. But that is not at all what this book is all about. This book is all about the process the process of getting rich by being a good person, of getting rich by helping others and serving others. And so it's not about what you do with your money after. It's about the process of how to get rich by helping a lot of people. I love that. Yeah, it's about just bringing service to the world, right? Zig Ziglar had that quote, right? Help enough people get what they want and you end up with whatever you want. That's true, but you have to do it in a smart way. And that's what the book's all about. The word's good millionaire, um, good, rich. For a lot of people, they don't go together, right? Sometimes people think, well, if you're going to get rich, you got to kind of, you know, be sneaky or, or, you know, manipulate or sometimes you just get a bad connotation. So what do you have to say about that? Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, the problem is, is that there's a lot of people, in fact, you know, I teach the millionaire mind. I've taught it to probably uh, a million and a half students live alone. So I get to hear what they're thinking and saying right in the right room there. And I have generally 5,000 people at a shot in my seminars. And so I have a good indication of what people are thinking. And most people grew up with the belief that somehow, somewhere, a little or a lot, that rich people are kind of a little bad. Let's call it in quotes, bad. Okay, rich people are bad. Okay, they take advantage of others. They, you know, they corrupt, you know, all money's going to corrupt you, all that stuff. Like, and so let me just explain this. This is a very simple start for people because you have to understand everybody that if you believe that rich people are kind of like sort of bad in any way, shape or form, and you want to be a good person, then guess what? You can never, ever, ever, ever be rich. How could you be something that you don't like? How could you be something that you don't honor and respect and admire? You can't. You will sabotage yourself until the day you die. You'll never get rich because you have this little inkling of a belief that rich people are bad in some way, shape or form. So we've got to get rid of that. And the number one way that we do that, at least in our seminars, you know, I say, okay, let's, it's a belief a lot of people have. Let's just examine it and Mm. see how accurate it is. Okay. So I say, How many of you believe that there are, yeah, at least some rich people who are quote unquote bad and literally everybody raises their hand. I say, okay, great, great. So how many of you believe that there's some middle-class people who are, you know, quote unquote bad and everybody raises their hand. I say, well, how many believe there's some poor or broke people who are quote unquote bad? Everybody raises their hand. Yes. So what on earth does this have to do with money? Nothing. Yeah, there's rich people, middle class people, poor people who are broke and broke and that are quote unquote unquote, bad, take advantage of others or whatever. It's got nothing to do with money. It has everything to do with you, everyone. Mm. It's not about them. It's about you. When you get rich, are you going to be a bad person in order to get rich? Are you going to take advantage of other people? Are you going to hurt other people? Are you going to harm other people? Are you going to be greedy? Are you? You go, no, I'm a good person. Then what's the point? Mm. What are you worried about other people for? It's about you. Yeah, if you're a good guy and you and you have a lot of money, you're going to be a good guy with a lot of money. If you're not, then you're going to be a not good guy with with money, right? Absolutely. So I, I know there's a there's a you know people sometimes today feel like you know money's not as important. I, for, in my mind. I'd say what you can do with money is the important part, right? It's because money is just money's energy. Money's money. But it's not so much about the money, but it's about what you can do with it. But there's people still that think, you know what? I don't need money. Chasing money shallow. What do you, what do you say to those people? 
Well, I mean, again, I'm a really big believer. The whole seminar is always about examining the beliefs that are in your head, whether they're accurate or not. So you can make a choice and say, yeah, I want to keep this belief process or I don't. And so you want to examine it. But the idea that having money or, or going, having a goal of, of having more money or doing well financially is shallow and makes you selfish or something, that would also mean that having a little money or being broke makes you deeper and more generous. And that's ridiculous. <laughs> that doesn't do anything. The bottom line, as you suggested, David, is that money is only going to make you more of what you already are. If you're a jerk, money will allow you to be a bigger jerk. If you're kind and generous, more money will allow you to be more kind and generous. Money's like a hammer, right? It can be used to build or to break things. So it's not about the hammer. It's about the person holding the hammer. So as far as money not being important, listen, money is just one area of life, right? It's like relationships are another and health is another. And would someone say it's really shallow to be good at your relationship? Okay, what, what are you crazy? Mm. Of course, I, I want to be have a good life. The parts of my life that are important, I want to be good at that. Money is just one of the parts of life, an area of life that is not more or less important than any other area. All right. And so you want to, you know, have financial success just the same way as you want to have relationship success and health success. And why wouldn't you? What do you, you want to be healthy and have a great relationship, but I want to be broke all my life and have a crappy life around money. I mean, who says that? Yeah. That's ridiculous. So it's not that it's more important than anything. It's important in the area in which it works, money works, and it's completely unimportant in the area in which it doesn't work. And so people will always say, yeah, well, money's not as important as love. And you know what? I happen to agree, but why the comparison? I mean, what's more important, your arm or your leg? Maybe they're both important. And so listen, everybody, this is the most important thing you have to get out of this that David's discussing here. And that is, it's a belief system. If you believe that money is not important, then I guarantee one thing, you're not going to have very much of it, ever. Masters, we are going to get you right back to the show. I appreciate your patience, and these sponsors are the ones that help the show keep moving forward. First, we have Vulcan 7. Guys, Vulcan 7 is your source for expired for sale by owner data. You have a built-in dialer in the system. You have a CRM built-in. If you want, you'll have information for farming neighborhoods. You can pull any list you want into the system and use it efficiently. Phenomenal product. You can get a two-week trial by going to Vulcan7.com forward slash path to mastery. Second, we have Audible, guys. Audible is the largest resource of audiobooks on the planet. Any book you can think of, Think and Grow Rich, I just got finished. Oh my gosh, listening to unbelievable. I would encourage you to get that. You can get it for free by going to davidsfreebook.com. Yes, F-R-E-E. -E, that's free. So here's how it works. They're going to ask you to put in a credit card number the first time. So here's what you're going to do. Give them the number. And then if for some reason you don't want to continue your membership, then all you need to do is go in your calendar, schedule a reminder for like three weeks out to cancel Audible, go and cancel it, and your card will never be charged and you get to keep the book. I mean, how do you go wrong? Same thing with Vulcan 7. Once you get to test their products for two weeks, you'll have all the data. If for some reason you don't want to continue, then you have all the data and obviously there's nothing they can do to get it back. And finally, I am going to be running a brand new course. It's on sales call reluctance. I'm super, super pumped about this. It's from my book, The Sales Playbook. There's five forms of call reluctance. We're going to cover all of them and we're going to help you discover the ones that are holding you back. And this isn't just about making calls. This is about phone calls. This is about talking to people in public. This is about sending emails, social media posts text. It makes no difference. We're covering all the five types. Fear of rejection. Fear of success is another one. Not knowing what to say. So there's multiple reasons why people are not doing what they need to do to be successful. We're going to cover all of them and we're going to give you a solution and a strategy for each one. Just go to the reluctantsalesperson.net. The reluctantsalesperson.net. Our next webinar will be October 3rd. Guys, you rock. Enjoy the rest of the show. In your book, The Good Millionaire, you give some very specific steps, Harv, on exactly how to make a lot of money. So give us a step or where, where would one start with that? 
Right. So we've already been talking about the first step, which is about your belief systems. And again, you've got to clear those what I call non-supportive, disempowering, negative belief systems that are holding you back from creating the money and the life that you want. That's the first step. The second thing is that what's really unusual is that most people don't understand money. So understanding money and how to earn it is probably the most important thing that people never got taught when they were young or even older, and they still run around not understanding money. So what is money? And you said it's energy, but there's a a real definition. And that is that, and everybody, if you have an opportunity in your place where you can write this down, I would encourage you to do so. The definition of money is simply money is a convenient a convenient method of exchanging value between people. And there's a lot of critical elements to that. But the most important thing that you have to understand is where do you get all your money? I asked that in my center. I go, where do you get all your money? People go, oh, I get it from my job. I get it from the bank. I get it from my business. I get it from the universe. I get it from God. No, no, you don't get your money from any of those. The only place you can get your money is, and listen closely, everyone, from other people. People, this is important, from other people. Only other people are the only entities on earth that exchange something called money. And so the big question that you have to understand and question is, why would someone give you their hard-earned dollars or money, right? Why would they do that? And here's the answer. And again, write this down if you can. The answer is because you're going to solve, what's the word? Solve a big or little problem for them. So the definition of an entrepreneur or even a person in a job of sales or any kind is, now a lot of your people are real estate people. So listen closely. I have a lot of real estate students myself. And once they get this and you get this in your heart and soul, everything can shift. So here it is. The definition is a person who solves problems for people at a profit or for pay. Solves problems for people at a profit or for pay. Bottom line, everyone, don't look at yourself as a real estate agent. Don't look at yourself as a business person. Don't look at yourself as a person trying to get rich or be successful. You look at yourself one way. You are a what? Problem solver. Problem solver. That is all you do. I love that. That's really good. Thank you for that. And I was funny, I was having this conversation with an agent this morning and uh, we were talking, she's, she knows she needs to pick up the phone and, and make phone calls, but she's not doing it and it's all fear. And we were talking about, you know, well, if you're coming from a place, you're just trying to help this person, then that's one way to help you get beyond the fear of making the calls, right? If you're if you're all worried about yourself, then yeah, it's, it's going to be fearful. But if you're calling from a place of, I just want to help, or I love what you just said, solve your problems. How do you go wrong with that? Even if the person hangs up on you? You know, a lot of people look at the word sell as a four letter word, and it is. And in our courses, and even in the book, we talk about just replace that word sell with help. You know what, David? I never, ever, ever, or nor in my company do we ever use the word sell. Never. Because it's inappropriate. We're not trying to sell anybody anything. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to help people. So people go, well, I hate rejection. I don't like when people say no. And who does? I mean, you may got to be crazy (laughs) like that. Okay. So how do you go avoid that? Number one, qualify the people that you're talking to and find out if they've got a problem. If they don't have a problem, don't try to sell them on a problem they don't have. Mm. Okay, that's a big deal. Why do that? There's a lot of people with problems out there that you can help. So you're just saying, oh, here's identifying the problem for that person. You might explain it and say it for them in a different way. And they go, yeah, you know, I could use more cash or, you know, my house is keeping me from doing the things I want. My mortgage is too big. Well, have you ever considered downsizing? What if we could do that for you? And you could be just as happy and even more happy and have all this extra cash or, you know, whatever it is, or it's a bad market. I want to get out. I'm not sure. Oh, that's a problem. I can work with you, Amy. We can help. I can help you with your problem. So if you form things in helping, then you're on the phone. You're not dialing for dollars. You're dialing to say, I'm calling to see if you are finding this a problem at all. Uh, no, I'm not. Okay, well, thank you. Have a wonderful day. I'm calling to find out if you have find this a problem at all in this market. Yeah, we've been kind of thinking about it, but we're scared to put our house in the market because the market's so crappy. Yes, I understand. It is a big problem for everybody right now. And then you go into talking to them and that's it. You're not trying to sell anybody anything. 
Awesome. All right. So Amina Blake, who is uh, one of my business partners, I told her I was doing this interview and she's a huge fan. Harv, she texted me a question that she said I had to ask you. All right. Here's Amina's question. Okay. They say you are the average of the top five people you surround yourself with. What advice will you give to her if she is looking to surround herself with higher net worth individuals? All right, I'm going to say something that most people are going to get upset about, but that's okay. First of all, I think the whole premise is bullshit. Okay, it's bullshit. I don't try to surround myself with anybody, all right? I just make sure that my own mind is on my side. The only voices in my head that I care about are the ones that are coming through my thoughts, okay? It doesn't matter who you surround yourself with. It matters what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. And what you're thinking leads to what you do. And what you do leads to your results. There are people in really crappy situations that are around people that are really, really crappy. And it's not helpful by any stress, but it's not helpful because they believe in those people and they're listening to their thoughts. All right. So bottom line, you can try and surround yourself with rich and successful people. That's great. And that's very helpful for your environment. I agree with that. But it's not even close to the environment that is between your ears. Okay. So, yeah, you can do the obvious thing and you can network and you can get into different associations and do all that. But if you think that's what's going to make you rich, you're barking up the wrong tree. It's what's between your ears, that voice, that influence that will determine whether you are successful and happy or not, period. You've mentioned also empathy. You talked about success is really important. Empathy is important. What does that have to do with becoming rich, becoming a millionaire? The most important thing, again, going back to how you get rich is by solving problems for people. Listen, if you solve a problem for one person, your reward is one money. Okay. One money. Let's call it that way. If you solve that same problem for some people, your reward, your result is some money. If you solve that same problem for a lot of people, your reward is a lot of money. If you want to make a lot of money, everybody, do not focus on money. Don't focus on getting rich. Forget about that shit, okay? Focus on helping people and helping a lot of people. If you notice, the real estate people in your arena, yeah, there's some that do the big, huge deals that are like the $100 billion deals. Great. If you're in that category, love you. You can do that. But most people go... Well, what's the difference between me earning 50 or 80 or 100,000 a year and John or Sue who's earning a million dollars a year? Well, the biggest difference is that you sold six houses for them and they sold 60 houses. There you go. They, you sold six, they sold, you helped six people, they helped 60, okay? That's the difference. So you gotta figure out how do I go from six to 60? And the way to do that is by simply helping people. So what's the way to help people? People ask me all the time, what is the number one thing about success in any business? And the word is, you hit it, David, empathy, empathy. What is the definition of empathy? It is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. In other words, if you can look at everything, not from your eyes and not from your success and not from your wallet and not from your position at all, But if you can look at everything through your customer's eyes and your customer's heart and your customer's issues and what's going on for them in their mind and body and soul, then you can help them. And if you can help them, then you can get rich. In other words, be great at putting yourself in your customer's shoes. What's their problem? How is it affecting their life? How is it affecting their mind? How do they feel? about what's their feelings what do they really want what will happen for them when they get what they really want so if you can relate to them at that deep level then you can help them and that's the goal here most people are so busy thinking about themselves and their sale and their how much money i'm gonna make and what happens if i don't get the sale and blah 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 and the house and the kitchen and you forgot about the most important thing The person you're talking to and what's going on in their head and in their heart. That's how you get rich. I mean, you just gave us a a lot of really, really great information. For the people listening to this, right, what's going to be the biggest challenge for the listeners right now? What's going to be their obstacle in implementing? 
you know, it depends on, I'm, I'm going to say this again right now. And most people are going to go, well, you know, that's not for me. Great. Okay. And then you, then you might as well just say getting really rich is not for me too. Okay. So you can choose. I don't care. It's not me. It's not my money. It's up to you. And I'm just here to try and help you. And for some people, I'm going to have to shake a few cobwebs to go like, well, I, maybe I've been thinking like a, a middle-class person or a broke person or a, you know, whatever. But the most important thing is, are you willing to get out of your comfort zone? Are you willing to give up decent living even good living for great. You know, the strategy for doing okay and decent and the strategy for being really, really rich are two different strategies, David. You know this. It's completely different in your way of doing business and your mindset. I think the biggest thing is people have to have the knowledge. People have to have the, you know, the the kick in the pants and people have to have the commitment. So the biggest thing they have to do right now is say, listen, In my book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, I talk about the number one difference between wealthy people and poor people is that rich people commit to their wealth. You have to commit to your success. You have to commit to going to a completely different level. And if you're not willing to commit to that, then guess what? You're going to do what's always easy, convenient, and comfortable. And God bless you. Go ahead and do that, but forget about getting rich. What I would say for everyone is that I would very, very, very much encourage, I wrote the book, The Good Millionaire, to make it super easy, to make it super simple for people to understand the exact eight steps that absolutely must be in place and must be in order, in order to get rich. So I'd encourage them to get the book. It's a, it's the easiest read in the world. I wrote this books so that it could be read in 45 minutes, 45 minutes, really simple, really easy, super high graphics and lots of fun. And it's done in an accelerated learning manner. So you can learn faster, remember more and uh, enjoy it a lot more. I always say this, if you have to be a freaking engineer and read a 300 page, wade through some manual to get rich, you're never going to do it. That's why I wrote this to you, actually, because you're in Connecticut, you're New York. I'm going to say you can sit on the toilet seat for 45 minutes, do your business, read this book, and now you'll know how to get rich. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll, yeah, I love it. Um, okay. So that said, I, I know you have a special offer for our listeners. But before I get to that, is there anything else that you wanted me to ask you that I did not ask you? No, I think we're good. I mean, your people are going to, when they read the book, they're going to have to understand something about systemization. They're going to have to understand something about duplication. And they're going to understand that they're the cog in the wheel. So everyone right now, if you're a simple real estate agent, if you're not earning a few hundred thousand dollars a year, I mean, like several hundred thousand a year, what that means that right now you're doing it in a way that you're kind of like in a job. You're you're almost like a, you know, you're a job person and you get paid like a job person. The Good Millionaire book is going to show you how to help a lot of people and create wealth for yourself. And it's going to turn your head around a little bit. But even before you get that book, because it does come in the mail or UPS, it's a soft cover book, but it's, you can't download it. It's definitely there to hold. You're going to have to decide if you're willing to commit to wealth. And you're going to see you right there very quickly that what you're doing now ain't going to cut it. Mm. And so you keep on doing that, doing that year after year. You, you know, you said something earlier, David. You said, you know, the market's not good right now. Wow. You know, I can say this right now. People that are very, very strong in business and do what I teach them to do, what we teach them to do. We don't care about the market. Mm -hmm. The market's not important. The economy is not important. The economy in general, the market in general, who cares? The only thing that's important is my economy. Mm. Everyone has a personal economy. If you notice, if it's so important, how come there's still some agents and people doing business that are extremely successful in this quote unquote crappy economy? There's a reason. Because their economy is always good. And that's what you have to learn to do for yourself. And that's what I want to teach you. Perfect. So you have something special for our, our listeners. I do. I do. I believe in helping people. I remember I said earlier, don't focus on money. Don't focus on yourself. Focus on just helping as many people as possible. And the results will be what you want them to be. So for your listeners, I want to do something. As I said, this is a, a book that's $24.95. It's brand new, pretty well. We've only put out 5,000 of them so far and uh, to our own database so far. There's just a few people that we want to get feedback from and the results have been off the charts. I'm here to help people. 
So I'm going to make this real simple. I want you to have the book. I want you to read the book. I wrote it so you read it in 45 minutes. It's fun and exciting. It's interesting. You're going to have some ahas like you've maybe never had before. You're going to be able to put yourself in that position. Go, oh my God, this is so, why am I doctor? I can do this. This is what I need to do. Okay. And so I'm going to gift, gift all your listeners, the book for free. Wow. So the book is yours. All you need to do is register for it. We're going to ask you to simply take care of the shipping costs for it, whatever it is. And uh, the twenty four ninety five dollars will eat that. So we'll ship you the book for free. You just take care of shipping, please, so we don't have to go underwater for it. The only thing I ask is that you take that 45 minutes, zip through the book, and let David know what you learned from that. And more importantly, just start taking the action and let us know how it's working for you. So you need to go to, uh, I think it's just simply harvecker.com forward slash David. Okay, perfect. Harvecker.com forward slash David. Nice and easy. Awesome. I love it. Thank you, man. All right. Well, listen, I just want to thank you for your time. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to put this together for us. And, you know, I think it was phenomenal. I can't wait to go back, listen to it. And I'm going to go uh, right away and get myself a copy of the book as well. Yeah, you're going to like it. It's fantastic. All right. I appreciate it. And thanks for being so real and authentic. That's the most important thing that you can do. You know, be authentic, be who you are. Don't try to be somebody that you're not. But Take the focus off of you and put it on to helping other people with a problem that you're able to solve for them. Solve that problem. The result will be you'll get some money. Solve that problem for a lot of people. The result will be you'll get a lot of money. It's pretty darn simple. That's how we roll, man. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Bye-bye. Masters, if you know me, you know health and nutrition is number one. And that's why I'm an advisor for AdvoCare products. Listen, in my opinion, these are the best products on the planet, guys. You get what you're supposed to get, right? I use the products for health. I use the products for energy. I use the products for wellness. So we have all the different lines from Spark, you know, starting your day with a great energy shot all the way to pre-workout. It's whatever your goals are, right? It's whatever your goals are. You can check out the products at www.livelongersmarter.com. That's my website. Or reach out to me. I'd love to have a 30-minute or, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30-minute conversation with you just talking about your health and nutrition goals and what I can do to help you achieve those goals. So again, products, energy line, wellness line, whether it's joints, you're getting up there in the age, you just want to keep take care of yourself. Uh, you know, I'll tell you, one of the greatest compliments I get is people, uh, you say, wow, I, I, you look amazing. I cannot believe you are the age you are. You know, weight loss. I've helped lots of people, guys, lose weight. Not just lose it, but keep it off with the products and the, the cool thing is i'd say 75 percent of the people who start with our products they continue using our products even after they initially tried them which has been amazing and strength if you're into bodybuilding then hey you know rich fronin okay i don't know if you know who rich fronin is uh he's an advocate for uh for advocare as well so amazing products you can see us we're featured on nascar uh, professional soccer college basketball college football men's health magazine last month these are the real deal, guys. LiveLongerSmarter.com is the website. Or reach out to me. if you Like I said, if you want to have a personal conversation with me, just send me an email in the subject line. Just put Advocate Products. And I'd love, like I said, schedule a 15 to 30-minute call with you to talk about your health and nutrition goals. Guys, you rock. Live longer, smarter. And as Gary Keller eloquently said, if you don't take care of your body, where are you going to live? You rock. You are listening to One More Sale with your host, David I. Hill, author of the Sales Playbook. Get your copy at www.thesalesplaybook.net.